Uh, delighted to be joined by international security expert, good friend of mine, Will Geddes. Will, good morning, my friend. How are you? I'm very well, Jeremy. Thanks for inviting me on the show, albeit in the circumstances. Pleasure, my friend. Um, there's no denying that this will be a rare occurrence. I get, I absolutely get, when you see those horrific images, um, you look at it and you think, oh, my God. I also understand why people are jumping on this and saying, you know, he's a refugee. Uh, but we can't sit here and pretend that every refugee is going to start stabbing children, right? But what it does say is that these sorts of attacks focus Britain's and other countries' minds on security and what it means for the safety and, and freedom of our own people. What, what would you say, having seen this footage, we talked to Blexley earlier about what the police... You can't really... What can you do about that? Well, the most important thing, I mean, and this is always the case, Jeremy, in, in the wake and post these <laughs> kinds of instances, to try and break down exactly what this individual's motivations were. Now, if there is a mental health issue, then that's something that could affect anybody of any ethnic background whatsoever. But if it is an issue which is related to his application for asylum in France, if it's something to do with the church that he was uh, devoutly following, and it's believed that during this attack he shouted, I'm doing this in the name of Jesus Christ. And there are many, many substrands of all sorts of religions. You know, it's you can't blanket any one religion with potentially some radicals, but there are substrands where they do develop those types, and we've seen it in the Christian community elsewhere around the world. Then only then can we actually attribute this to something which potentially has a broader impact. Now, if it is something that is associated to an individual that comes from a particular ethnic background, that is trying to gain a position or foothold in a particular country, then one's got a question, you know, is there a broader issue that we've got to consider in terms of those individuals and their cultural implications and impact into our communities? I think, I think the interesting thing is, um, we were talking earlier, buddy, about this watch list. I mean, the problem is, I absolutely agree with you. He wasn't a known terrorist. He wasn't a known criminal. Certainly, of course, we want to do everything we can to safeguard UK citizens. But until we know the facts, my point is, well, this says more about this free movement of millions of people in and out of Europe, in and out of countries, without paperwork, and we don't know what the hell they are, where they come from, what they're going to do. And if that is unfair, I have people saying to me, you can't say that. These poor people are fli... He was a Swedish refugee. Yes, probably there are individual reasons. But I think the big issue, the big security issue, the big question, because it'll inflame tensions, people want to know how this can continue to happen and how we can be safe as a country. And I get that, don't you? Yeah, I do. I totally agree with you. I, I mean, there, I, I think if I go to the fundamentals of what I believe is, is is essential to obviously trying to keep a peaceful world around us, it's about basically contribution between communities. You know, I think ethnic diversity is important. It allows us to be far broader in our perspectives. It makes us uh, more educated and understanding as to other people's sympathies, beliefs and everything else. But as long as that's done with positive contribution, and my personal feeling is that if you do have individuals that are seeking asylum or they are refugees in some shape or form, that they have to contribute positively to our community. Why else other than that those reasons would we wish to invite them into our country? The, prob the problem is, Will... Uh, the problem is all the all the do all the people who disagree with me say you talk about ethnic diversity absolutely you talk about personal contribution I couldn't agree more they'll say quite rightly I have to say that the system is screwed there's too much of a waiting list and these people can't work what I want people to answer is the Albanian men who get off boats throw their papers away and disappear into our society I suspect that this man by the way, this is speculation before somebody has a go, probably immersed himself. Well, as you said, could be the family, could be France to allow him. But we don't know where these bloody people are. That is the issue, is it not? It is. And again, it's drawing a fine line, Jeremy, and I think you'd agree with this, that, you know, that people have talked about national ID cards, you know, and people have been very opposed to it. I, I, I think we've got to actually recognise and not be so naive to understand that the phone that we carry in our pocket is an ID and that is transmitting our position to big companies, big data and potentially even the government in many instances. So we already have adopted some sort of national ID. But it's those individuals that want to 
uh, inveigle their way into our communities, that want to exploit our communities for criminal and nefarious purposes that we've got to consider, we need to be able to account for. And, and those individuals that actually do immerse themselves without integration or stay within enclosed communities because, you know, for a variety of reasons, they may not feel that they can integrate, they, they feel they may not be welcome. There, there is so much work to be done. It's such a complex issue. But this particular issue, I mean, there are so many question marks about this attack yesterday in Annecy, um, as you know, Jeremy. You know, uh, why was he looking for asylum in France when he was in Sweden? He'd already got his status there. Absolutely. Uh, they are part of Schengen. There's every reason why, there's no reason why he couldn't move freely between borders. So, you know, there are so many questions here we, we still need answered. And it's quite interesting because when I started the show at 6.30, I, I just genuinely said we cannot at this moment know what his motivation was it could be that his ex-wife is stopping him from seeing his kid that's why it could be that he's a radicalized i don't know nut job it could be uh, you know that, that that this this is because of a way he's been treated in terms of migration but <clears throat> beyond all of that yes horrific and vile and awful, <clears throat> but it's that movement. That's what people want to hear. Will Geddes as ever, thank you so, so much for being on.